Happy market day, guys. Welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, hi, my name is Emily. I'm the owner of Emily Page Company. I'm a 24 year old small business owner based out of Columbus, Ohio. This video is going to be super exciting. It is a market vlog. I don't really have much to prep for this market. I've known about it for months and months now and you guys know that I'm an overthinker so I have everything all ready to go but we are going to go into Home Depot together because I really want to get some storage bins. Last year we were just using Ikea bags and they were great for the limited space that I had in my vehicle but then we would struggle at markets because markets would get really busy and then we were just struggling to find the size of that design and it was a mess but we're going to be organized this year and find some bins as you guys know that I purchased a van so I don't really have limited space anymore so I really want to use bins to kind of keep my extra inventory in and just make it easier for us to find like the correct size and the design so we're on the hunt for some storage bins so let's go inside Home Depot and see what they got. Does anyone else always just get lost in Home Depot because Right now I'm in the cabinet section, but we'll find them. Okay, I found the bins, but it's a little slim pickings. But these black totes, I see everyone have these at markets. And this is a 27 gallon for $11.49. And I believe that these are stackable too. I just wish they were clear, but I'll just have to like label on the sides. So I think I'm gonna get eight of these. All right, I think I'm gonna get two of these. They're the 106 quart totes for $26. So my apparel that's already on um, the clothing hangers, I can just put in here, which will make it a lot easier. So I don't have to like take them off the hangers. And of course, when you go to Home Depot, you have to look at the plants. So I want to see if I can find any, but I don't think I'm going to buy any because my market this weekend, there's a really fun plant girly that I love. Do you guys plant any fruits and veggies during the summer? Parker and I normally get our stuff on Mother's Day, so we get like tomatoes, cucumbers, like cilantro herbs, fun things like that. All right guys, this is what the haul looks like. I got two of the clear ones and then eight of the stackable ones. And then if I end up eating more, we'll just come back because we live like two minutes from here. So let's go home. I got that checked off my list. I've been wanting to switch to totes for quite some time now. And now that I have the room with the van, I can finally do it. I will catch you guys at the warehouse tomorrow. Friday friends we just got to the warehouse and I'm getting ready to pack up my little mock-up booth that's behind me and get it into the van in my first video I posted I showed you guys kind of like what my mock-up booth looks like so I have an 8x8 booth which I'm not really used to I'm used to a 10x10 10x20 so I kind of condensed a lot of my stuff but this is still me going all out I always go all out for markets if you know you know I want to show you guys kind of a little tour before I pack it in so this will be where my cups are at so we'll have 20 ounce and then 16 ounce cups and then you'll come over here and look at this new tote bag I made. It's so cute. And then you'll come over here and then this is where all my embroidered apparel will be. This one will be like giftables. My cute checkout stand. And then I already packed a few things up. And then right side of my booth is going to be like my boutique goodies. So I have all these really pretty dresses. I'm actually going to be wearing this dress on market day because it's so pretty. So we'll have some dresses and then some cute sweaters. And of course little tank tops. So that's what my booth is going to look like. I'm going to pack up all of my little booth goodies and get them into the van. Earlier in the video, you guys saw me go to Home Depot and grab some totes. And I got two of these and these specifically are going to be where my clothes are going to be at. So my clothes that are already on hangers, I'm just going to put in here so I can just roll my rack out and put them on the hangers. And it's just going to save me so much time. So let's load all of the clothes that are on hangers into this tote.
is what we're working with. I just have four totes, so two of my clear ones, two of my black ones, and then these are all the clothes that are on the hanger. So I just push them all up front and then let's load. We have a ton of room in here, so let's load the rest of it in. marketplace and I think it was a pretty good find it was 20 bucks and I know exactly what I'm going to use it for so before I would just put my straws on my table and this year I have like a fancy schmancy checkout stand so I'm going to put it down above my checkout stand put my straws on this and it's about knee level so it's not super tall but I think it'll be perfect for what I need it for <music> a little chat real quick when i first posted about the van a lot of people messaged me saying like why would you buy the van what do you need the van for literally just for markets as you guys were seeing as i was packing the van a lot of my stuff is bulky so clothing is bulky my glassware is bulky my displays are bulky this checkout stand is very bulky but this is my first time using it but i love it so we're keeping it before i got the van i was just using my vehicle and around june of last year we ended up starting to take two vehicles to markets because I was just growing, 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 and I didn't have enough room in my car, and then I started using Parker's car too. And I really had to limit myself on how much product I could bring to markets, and that was just really bumming me out because we were selling out and selling so much product at markets. So that's why I bought the van, so I don't have to limit myself anymore. And I can go all out because if you've visited me in a market before, you know that I go all out at every single market I do. It doesn't matter what booth space I have, I've had a small as a 6x5 all the way up to a 10x20 and I go all out for every single of it. Something that I'm going to be interested to see if having the van is either going to speed up, slow down, or keep my setup teardown time the same. I think it's going to speed it up because I don't have to take apart my racks and I literally can just pull stuff out and put it on the racks and I have a dolly this time so that means fewer trips in and out. So we'll have to check back in later in the video to see if it speeds up, slows down, or keeps my setup teardown time the same. I realize that I haven't even shared any details with you guys about this market. So today's currently Friday and the market is on Sunday from 11 to 5 at BrewDog in Canal Winchester. And this venue is so fun. I love this venue so much. So half the building is their showroom. So that's where us vendors are going to be. And there's 50 of us. So it's a pretty big showroom. And then the other half of the building is their restaurant and brewery. And their food is so good. I'm probably going to end up getting the mac and cheese because it's just so good. I've been a vendor at this location for going on three years now with different hosts. And every time I do an event here, it's just incredible. The foot traffic is so high and the crowd is my kind of crowd. So I always end up doing good here. I'm really excited to see repeat customers. Every time I come to this location, I always see repeat customers and I'm excited to meet new customers. So the event is from 11 to 5 and they sent out an email a couple days ago saying we could set up as early as 8 a.m. and I think I'm going to get there at 8 a.m. Normally I would just give myself two hours to set up and that's plenty but this is the first market that I'm taking the van with me so I want to give myself plenty of time and I don't want to feel rushed or anything and I mean if I have like leftover time I can chat with other vendors and kind of eat my breakfast and also my mom's going to be at this market. So my mom is also a vendor. She sells pet accessories and scrunchy headbands. You guys will get to meet her and see her. So she's going to be right next to me too, which is going to be really fun. In previous videos, I explained that Parker and I don't come to the warehouse as of right now. So what we're going to do is drive the van back home today. And then Saturday, we're going to chillax. And then Sunday's market day. But I do want to chat with you guys about what I bring to every single market tomorrow. So I will catch you guys tomorrow.
today is Saturday and I've just been chillaxing, doing some laundry and just like little chores like cleaning the house, but I wanted to go over my market must-haves for you guys. These are things that I bring to literally every single market with me and I have to have them. First up is my belt bag. You guys will always see me wearing a belt bag and this has some goodies in it. So I keep my cash in here and if you're a business owner who does markets and you have a cash box, please consider to make the switch to have a belt bag or something you can wear in your person. I've heard so many horror stories about people's cash boxes getting stolen. So maybe think about making the switch. I think this was like $9 on Amazon. Inside my belt bag, I have my backup card reader. This is the Shopify chip and tap card reader. It's really great. It's the basic version. I think it's like $30 or so. And then I also have a battery pack in here. This is for my phone just for if it dies because I do need to use direction. So it's just nice to have this. Of course, I have safety clips in here because I feel like somebody always asks for safety clips. So I always have them. This is the Shopify Pro Go and it is fantastic, but it was definitely an investment. I believe it was around $400 and I also got the case with it too, but it has changed my market experience so much. I can't imagine life without this now. It has made my checkout experience so much faster and it's also made my life so much easier. I switched all of my products to a barcode method. So every single product in my shop has a barcode on it. So I just scan the barcode and then it'll take it to checkout and then I do cash card, gift card, etc. So this thing is incredible. It's a market must-have. I, Like I said, I just can't imagine my life without this. These are all of my market must-haves. I'm really excited for market day tomorrow, so I'm going to chillax for the rest of the night and I will catch you guys tomorrow morning. Happy market day, guys. Today is going to be a great day. I'm super excited. It's currently seven in the morning, so I'm going to make myself some breakfast and iced coffee and then we can head out the door. I just got in the van and it's a lot colder than I thought it was gonna be. It's 23 degrees outside, but the event's inside, so it's okay. We're gonna have a great day still. I definitely did not mention this earlier, but I'm actually doing this event solo today. Every event that I do at this brew dog, I typically do solo because the booth is a lot smaller, so I'd rather just fit more product in. And yeah, it's gonna be a solo day today. The drive to brew dog is about 30 minutes, so I'm going to get on the road and I'll see you guys at brew dog. I just got to brew dog and I'm really surprised on how the drive went. I'm very proud of myself for driving the van for the first time. Something that I love that hosts do is they send a vendor map before the event and this host did this so I already know where my booth is going to be at and in my opinion my booth is in one of the best at this venue because I'm right by the entrance and the exit and just as I guessed it I'm the first one here I'm honestly not surprised at all this is normally how it goes I'm the first here and last to leave I'm going to unload take everything inside park the van and then we can start setting up the booth what it looks like from a customer perspective so I'm gonna walk out and then come in and let's do it
It's 11 o'clock, which means the market is officially starting. So I'm going to put you guys above so you guys can see what my booth looks like. And I'm just really excited. So let's go. So far the event's been really good. She said it's been really successful for her too. And right now I'm hitting, I think, at 15 orders, which is really awesome. And I definitely have already hit my booth goal. So I will check in with you guys later, but so far so good. check-in and it has been fantastic. I've kind of been selling a little bit of everything like my cups, my apparel, my booty clothing. So overall I'm just really happy with how this market is going so far and I have a huge stack of hangers over here that are empty which always makes me really excited. So I will check back in with you guys later but so far so good. Guys this is what I'm talking about. Look how many empty hangers there are. after the market and I have no idea where I last left off but my voice actually ended up going hoarse towards the last few hours of the market because I was talking so much to customers and vendors and I just didn't want to film with my voice being hoarse so here we are. I'm sure you're wondering how much I made at this market because I know a lot of other small businesses share how much they make at markets but personally I don't feel comfortable sharing this information but I will be sharing with you guys my booth goals kind of how I judge what goals to have for my markets. I want to share with you guys my total number of sales and orders and then i wanted to also share my top five best sellers for this market first off let's talk about booth fees and booth goals i've paid as little as 30 dollars all the way up to 600 dollars for a booth fee and when i say booth fee that means you know what the event is asking for for the booth space travel food and then if you're paying someone to help you i started doing markets in 2021 and i remember i would always hear vendors say 10 times the booth fee is the goal so let's say you paid a hundred dollars for your booth then a thousand dollars would be the goal and that was my goal for pretty much 2021 to 2023 and then in 2023 i started to apply to markets that were bigger in my area so these markets were getting hundreds if not thousands of applications so they were obviously harder to get into 
but I did get into a majority of the markets that I wanted to get into that were the bigger markets in my area. And obviously with bigger markets, that means a larger booth fee that you have to pay, but that also means bigger foot traffic, more people know about the event, and more sales. And 2023 was a very successful market season for me. So all the events that we're doing this year, we did last year. So I do know what to expect this year for my markets and just kind of how to judge my goal for markets and how much I sell at markets too. My goal for this market was around 20 times the booth fee and I hit 20 times the booth fee just a couple hours into the market. So I actually ended up with 28 times the booth fee. I had a lot of repeat customers and that makes me really happy to know that they liked their product products and just wanted to shop with me again and then I had a lot of new customers too and that made me happy also just that my product caught their eye and they wanted to buy something from my small business. Next up I wanted to share with you guys my total number of orders and sales. So Shopify shows me the analytics from my markets which is another reason I absolutely love Shopify. So they break down like how much you made, how much you sold. There's just so many analytics and that's one reason I love Shopify. When I say orders, that means how many transactions I had. And then when I say sales, that means how many products I sold. For this market, I had a total of 60 orders, which means 60 transactions. And then I had 137 sales, which means a total number of products sold. This was a great kickoff to market season. And I just can't wait for the other markets this year. I also wanted to share with you guys my average order value. Now this is different for every single business. For example, I sell products as low as $3 and then my most expensive product is $73. So it's kind of right in the middle of there and this market, my average order value was $44 and that's pretty normal um, range for me. So my average order value ranges from $30 to $50 on my website as well as markets. So that was right in the sweet spot. Lastly, let's go over my top five best sellers from this market. And when I was going back and looking at my analytics on how I did, I noticed that I kind of sold a little bit of everything at this market you know, my embroidered apparel, my cups, and then I introduced a boutique section. So this is my first market with dresses and I sold a lot of my boutique stuff too. So overall I sold a little bit of everything. I'm gonna put a picture up in the corner of what the product is just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Number five is the Sorry Emily Ice Coffee Crew Neck. And this one I think did good just because it's silly and relatable. And I was hearing that a lot, like, oh my gosh, that's so me. And that released in my latest launch, which makes me happy that it did good. Number four was the 20 ounce orange butterfly cup. And I think this did good because it's a perfect spring cup and it's just like happy, bright, and fun. Number three was the blind date with the book. And I think this did good just because people love a mystery and make it a book mystery. It's so fun. Number two was the 20 ounce lemon cup. And this one always does really good at my markets. It's just bright, fun, and it's really springy too. People love fruit themed items. My friend Jessica, who is at the market too, she sells ceramic goodies and her blueberry bowls sold out within like the first hour, which I'm really happy for her because she's so awesome. Number one was my weekend is fully booked crew neck. I sold out of the mediums like that. And in total, I sold 15 of these. And I think the reason these did good is because they were right front and centered at my booth, um, right on the corner where everyone, that was like the first thing they saw. Overall, I did really good at this market. I love doing these markets. I have one scheduled for summer and then another scheduled for their holiday event. And then I'm also doing their big spring event and fall event. I love the ladies who host this event. They are awesome. And I do consider them friends just because they're really fun to chat with and I enjoy being vendors with them. My official kickoff to market season is in three weeks. So when I say market season, I mean, we're doing one to three markets every single weekend from the end of April all the way up to October. Then we're gonna have like a little break and then it's gonna kick off again from November to December. So it's gonna be a very busy market season for us. So what I've been doing in the meantime is just prepping. Like I said, all of the events we're doing this year, we did last year, so I know what to expect. And last year I was selling out of products very quickly at markets. So I realized that I wasn't really making a big stock. So this year I'm really focusing on making a lot of embroidered goods because that's what sold really well at my markets last year. So right now what I've been doing is just kind of making inventory, keeping a stock. I feel like I'm gonna go through it really fast. So I'm just trying to get ahead of the game. I really struggle with making content on market days just because I get really busy and I don't have time to look at my phone. But this year we're really gonna try. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I love every single one of you and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.